In this tutorial, we discuss the grid snap icon first, which makes the cursor snap to a specific interval spacing when creating, editing, or transforming objects. Grid snap can be toggled on or off by clicking on the grid snap icon in the lower left corner of the modeling window. When the grid snap icon is clicked down, the grid snap is on. When the grid snap icon is clicked up, the grid snap is off. Grid snap has two values, one for the linear distance and one for angles. The distance value applies equally to x, y, and z dimensions. The angle value applies to any input defined by angles, such as drawing arcs or rotating objects. The linear grid snap value can be accessed directly in the text field next to the grid snap icon. For this tutorial, leave it at the default value of 1 foot. With grid snap on, draw an extruded rectangle. While creating the object, Observe in the input palette that the cursor is snapping to numbers that are round multiples of one foot. It should be mentioned that guide and object snaps override the grid snap. With grid snap off, create another box. Observe in the input palette that the cursor now moves to arbitrary non-rounded numbers. It is recommended to have grid snap on as often as possible. This typically produces cleaner modeling. For example, two boxes created with grid snap on can be accurately aligned. Two boxes created with the grid snap off will not be aligned no matter how hard you may try. They may look aligned at a smaller scale, but when you zoom in, you will be able to see that they are not really aligned. In this next example, we'll see how the angle snap value can be used. Observe the default angle value of 5 degrees. For this tutorial, leave it at the default value. With grid snap on, rotate an object and observe in the input palette that the cursor is snapping to numbers that are rounded to multiples of 5 degrees. With grid snap off, rotate an object and observe in the input palette that the cursor now moves to arbitrary, non-rounded degree values. Last we covered the object snap icon. Snapping to parts of objects is enabled and disabled by the object snap icon at the bottom of the project window. If enabled, the icons next to it further determine which object parts can be snapped to. One or more of the object snap icons can be active at the same time. Disabling object snap disables all object snap icons. Enabling object snap enables all the previously selected object snap icons. Based on the cursor position on the object and the object snap icon selected, the potential object snaps available is previewed on the object as colored dots using the following color coding. A red dot signifies a potential point snap on the object. A small green dot signifies the potential interval snaps. The default is 2. If we set this value to 4, then the segment displays 3 green dots to signify the segment being divided into 4 intervals. We will do an example in just a moment. A large green dot signifies the actual potential snapping point anywhere along a segment. A blue dot represents a potential intersection snap. And a magenta dot signifies a tangent or perpendicular snap position. Let's try a few examples using object snaps. Create a 2D polygon shape using the polygon drawing tool. We'll look at point snap first. Enable object snap and disable all snap icons except for point snap. Select the vector line tool and click once away from the polygon to start drawing. Move the cursor over a segment of the polygon and observe that the two endpoints display a red dot to signify the point snap positions. Click on either red dot to snap the vector line to that point of the polygon. Hit the E key to end the vector line. Now let's look at the interval snap. Undo the previous vector line. Disable the point snap icon and enable the interval snap icon. Invoke the object snap options dialog. Set interval snap width to four divisions, then hit the return key. Select the vector line tool and click one time away from the polygon to start drawing. Move the cursor over a segment of the polygon and observe that the segment displays three green dots to signify the segment being divided into four intervals. Click on any green dot to snap the vector line to that division of the segment. Hit the E key to end the vector line. Now let's look at the segment snap. Undo the previous vector line. Disable the interval snap icon and enable the segment snap icon. Select the vector line tool and click one time away from the polygon to start drawing. 
move the cursor over a segment of the polygon, and observe that the segment displays a large green dot at the cursor position to signify the cursor snapping to a location along the segment. Click when the large green dot is visible and the vector line is snapped to the segment. Hit the E key to end the vector line. Next we look at the intersection snap. Undo the previous vector line. Create a new vector line across the polygon. Disable the segment snap icon and enable the intersection snap icon. Select the vector line tool and click one time away from the polygon to start drawing. Move the cursor over the intersection of the vector line and the polygon to observe a blue dot that signifies the intersection of the two entities. Click on the blue dot to snap the vector line to the intersection. Hit the E key to end the vector line. Now we will look at perpendicular and tangent snaps. Delete all the objects, then create a 2D circle using the circle drawing tool. Disable the intersection snap icon and enable the perpendicular and tangent snap icons. Select the vector line tool and click one time away from the circle to start drawing. Move the cursor over any part of the circle and observe a magenta dot that signifies the perpendicular and tangent snap positions. Click on the magenta dot to snap the vector line to either the perpendicular or tangent snap location. Hit the E key to end the vector line. This concludes the grid and object snapping tutorial.